the, the first in a series on multiple linear regression. Uh, here, we'll just do a quick overview and introduce some plots. Uh, I'm continuing to try to keep these videos short, so I'm really trying to break these up into subsections. So this is just going to be a quick idea of what is multiple linear regression and how can we visualize it to have a good mental model of it. If you want to read some from our books on this topic, go to Modern Dive. Chapter 6.1 is going to be a really, I think, good introduction to the idea that matches fairly closely with the way I will do things in this course. The code will be a little bit different, but I think that's going to be beneficial to you in the long run. Eventually, we'll work our way towards the content of Chapter 6.2 in Modern Dive. So if you're excited about stats and this topic, uh, jump in and read it now. If you need to wait a week to read uh, subsection 6.2 from Modern Dive, that will not uh, hurt you in this course at all. Uh, Biostat actually has a good write-up of this same material, but it's a little bit more technical. It's quite a bit more technical. Uh, so I think that should come next if you're going to read from both. And those sections listed are uh, good for this week's content. Right off the bat, something that often confuses people is the difference between multiple and multivariate. So I'm just emphasizing here that in this class, we will never touch multivariate regression. We will only look at multiple regression. And in the case of multiple regression, we have one numeric response variable and multiple, hence the word, explanatory variables. Notice that I am not specifying whether or not the explanatory variables are numeric or categorical, because you can have both in multiple linear regression. We're going to go through four basic options for multiple linear regression, at least at this point of this course. Uh, certainly later on, you can develop more sophisticated models, and we will look at some of them. But as far as this course is concerned, at this point, we are going to look at um, one numeric explanatory variable and one categorical explanatory variable. And I'm just going to short it because I'm clearly running out of room for an opening slide. Uh, the basic idea is going to go like this. Option the first, you could just do simple linear regression. And that's actually with zero categorical explanatory variables, but that's OK. We'll keep my assessment here. Uh, option the second, you could do unique intercepts. That is, these lines will cross the y-axis at different points, so they have unique intercepts. That is, maybe you want to assess how x is related to y across two different groups that is across the levels of one categorical variable, but you could insist that the lines you're fitting through the data have the same slope, but unique intercepts. Okay, so we're gonna continue in this theme. What are the ways we can incorporate one numeric variable so that you get some kind of slope and one categorical variable? So you could alternatively say, we're going to insist on the same y-intercept, but unique slopes in order to explain the relationship between x and y. Or your fourth option here is just go crazy. You could have unique slopes and unique intercepts, such that your numeric explanatory variable x explains your numeric response variable y dependent on the levels a and b of some categorical explanatory variable. So these are basically your four options at this point in this class. You can either have one line going through all the data. 
you can have multiple lines going through the data where they have different or unique intercepts, but you force the same slope. You can have the same intercept, but unique slopes, or you could have unique slopes and unique intercepts uh, relative to the levels of some categorical explanatory variable. And in this way, we are expanding the way we can model the world around us. So let's see if we can replicate in a little bit more detail these plots that I've really just sketched out here in R. So, uh, okay, here we are in R, but we need a data set. So you all have gotten used to this at this point. Uh, on my GitHub repository named data, I'm going to go to a data set named hospital. And let's just look at it really quick first. It's a random sample of hospitals, not people. It's a random sample of hospitals where the variables cover aspects of the hospitals and the patients within each hospital. That is, if it looked at like the variable age, it took a bunch of samples of people from a particular hospital, averaged them together, and reported that one number for that particular hospital. Okay, so there's 113 observations, that is 113 hospitals, and seven variables. We're going to look at stay, which is the average length of patients stay in days in a particular hospital, and infection risk, which is, this is a technical term in the world of statistics that essentially means the higher the infection risk, the more likely a patient will acquire an infection. It is not a proportion, so it is not between zero and one, and there's really not other great interpretation to it. The bigger this infection risk number is, the more likely it is that a patient in a particular hospital will acquire an infection. The lower the number is, the less likely. So we're going to look at how stay relates to infection risk across region. So in this case, we're going to use region, a categorical, though it's numerically encoded, that's going to cause us some issues, which is why I chose this one to kind of catch you guys early on how to deal with this issue. We're going to use region as a categorical explanatory variable. The regions are numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4, but those numbers are meaningless, like you cannot add region 1, think of it as the west, together with region 2, think of it as the east, and get anything meaningful out. You don't suddenly get west out of west plus east, you just can't add the two together. So even though they're numerically encoded, region will be a categorical explanatory variable for us. Infection risk will be our response variable and stay will be our numeric explanatory variable. So we got two explanatory variables, one numeric, one categorical, and one numeric response variable. Okay, so I see a typo now. This line of code will not work appropriately because as you all know, you need to go to the CSV file and then click raw. So I should update that URL um, before I post this video, and I'll try to do that. Okay, so I'm copying out that URL. I'm coming over here into R, and I'm going to use read.csv in quotes. Uh, in parentheses and in the quotes, the URL that we have, and here is our data set read in as a data frame. I'm going to use the library ggplot2 to make plots, and I'm going to use the library dplyr to help us do that. So if you recall, we can make a quick plot that we'll use as, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start a new file, because that's going to help us keep our code organized as we go here. If you recall, we can use ggplot where you pass in the data frame of interest and then specify the aesthetic that you want. Now remember, stay will be our numeric explanatory variable and infection risk will be our numeric categorical variable. 
and we can make the base layer of our plot like this. Now, in order to get the second explanatory variable on this plot, I'm going to color these points by region. And here's the issue with region being, we know region is a categorical variable, but because it um, consists of numbers, R does not know that region is supposed to be categorical. And so what we get here is this gradient of colors because R is trying to force region to be numeric because it's written numerically. But what we want to do instead is force region to be a factor. So we can just wrap the function factor around region right in place. And then you can see R will appropriately give unique colors to each of the regions of interest. Now, I want to de-emphasize the color in the background of the plot. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the minimal theme to get rid of that background so we can really make these colors pop. And I think that'll help us visualize these different models uh, as we go. OK. So we are going to have to fit some models. And in R, to fit linear regression, you will use the function named LM. That stands for linear model. Now, if you recall, the formula inside the function LM goes response variable, which is almost always numeric, first, as explained by, and then you put the explanatory variable of interest. Now remember, this tilde character is found by holding shift and pressing the button to the left of 1. So we're going to start with the simple linear regression model, where we predict one numeric response variable with one numeric explanatory variable. And both of these variables come from the data set hospital. Then I'll just add a little comment here. That is, anything after the hashtag will be a comment. R will completely ignore it, uh, reminding us that this is the fit for simple linear regression. So I'm just going to name my fitted object with underscore and then a string of letters to help me remember which model is which. And here, this one's going to be for simple linear regression. OK? So. As before, you can look at the fitted model here. You get an estimate of the intercept and an estimate of the slope and all that same jazz that we're going to look at in more detail in another video. But for now, I'm going to show you how to fit the other three options we have about um, multiple linear regression. So the next one was um, unique intercepts. So I'm going to write u for unique and int for intercepts. You can still use the same function LM. We still want infection risk as the numeric response variable. We want region to be the categorical explanatory variable. And then watch this, just plus stay. If we just go categorical explanatory variable plus numeric explanatory variable, we will get a model that has unique intercepts, but the same slope. OK, so what I want you to start memorizing then is by adding together a categorical explanatory variable and a numeric explanatory variable, we will get unique intercepts. OK. We had other options, like you could do unique slopes, which I'm going to denote by U, SLPS for slopes. We'll use LM. Infection risk is still our numeric response variable. We still want to deal with the categorical explanatory variable region. The difference now is you use a colon to indicate that we want unique slopes. 
So what this will do is, in the language of statistics, is interact all the levels of region across the numeric explanatory variable stay. This will give us one intercept and multiple slopes. Don't worry, we're getting to the plots soon. Our last option was unique intercepts and unique slopes. That is four distinct lines where we try to predict infection risk using the categorical explanatory variable region and stay. So in order to make these different plots, we're going to have to fit these four different models. Thankfully, all that code ran. Next up, we're going to use the library dplyr. Just stick with me here to mutate the data frame hospital. And then we will assign over the data frame hospital whatever we do to mutate it. So we're going to take our data set hospital. We're going to add some columns. That's what the word mutate means. And then we're just going to overwrite the data set, data set hospital. So at this point, it has seven variables. But we're going to add four variables to our data frame hospital by assigning into it whatever we do on the right-hand side here, that is, mutating it. So what we want is y hat for the simple linear regression model. Now remember, y hat are the predictions from our whatever line we fit through these data. Our predictions for each value of stay, you'll go up to the line. You have to imagine it for now because we're working on plotting it. You'll pick a value on the x-axis. You'll go up to your uh, simple linear regression line, and then you move over to the y-axis. And whatever value on the y-axis you predict at a stay of 10 days, will be y hat for a stay of 10 days. We're going to say we're going to predict the y variable at a specific value of the x axis variable, and we'll put a hat on it to denote that. Because we're making a prediction, there's a function in R named predict. And we'll predict from the fitted model for a simple linear regression. So we're just going to copy this same pattern. We're going to predict for the unique intercept model whatever the model says for the unique intercepts fit. We're going to predict for the unique slopes model, whatever the model dictates for the unique slopes fit. We're going to predict for the unique intercepts and unique slopes model, whatever the model tells us to. OK, remember, we are adding these four variables, that is columns, to our data frame. So right now there's seven variables in this data frame. But when we hit Enter, as long as I made no typos, woohoo, we now have 11 variables in this data frame. And it's still stored in the data set named hospital because we overwrote that data set hospital by calling this line of code. OK, so here we go. Let's take our base layer plot and add some lines. And literally, all I'm going to do is go geome line to add the lines we want. In the aesthetic, we want stay on the x-axis. And let's just go in order, y hat slr plus. And I'm just going to make these points kind of fade into the background so that we really focus on the lines themselves. Here we go. This is simple linear regression. This is one line through all the data. It ignores region. You can see there's just one line. It's colored a little bit different because we are still coloring by region. But you can see it's just one line for all of the different regions. OK, I know this is a lot of setup. But the point is, once you have the setup, watch how easy it is to change to the unique intercept, but same slope model. Boom, just like that. That is, that justifies all of this obnoxious setup right there. So here are four unique lines because we have four regions. 
They all have the same intercept, which when stay is equal to zero, way over here, these intercepts all go down, possibly negative at that point. But notice these lines are perfectly parallel because they all have the same slopes. So it looks like region four from this model suggests that there's a higher chance of infection for the same duration of stay than for most of the other regions. Oh, looks like you don't want to be in region four. We can change this one line here, SLPS, to get the unique slopes model. I know lots of them look parallel, but they're not. They are slightly not parallel. So that's great. And the last model we have, U ints and U slopes, gives us four distinct lines. One line relating infection risk to stay in days for each region. So I'm going to emphasize, this is the piece you really need to pay attention to, because it's this sort of syntax that dictates whether we have unique intercepts and unique slopes. This syntax gives us unique slopes. This syntax gives us unique intercepts. Once you can imagine in your head this basic plot and the four variations we have on it, then the piece you need to tie to those four variations are the appropriate syntax to give us those different models. So the pieces you really need to take away from this are what four plot options do we have? And how can I make R fit those uh, linear regression models appropriately?